Hey guys, welcome back to the Vice Casting Couch. Today we'll be installing Lee Reboot on a Dell Optiplex 3050 Micro. Now I'm super excited about this. This was announced in Lee Reboot's December 12th release, and this checks all the boxes for me. I was looking for something that was relatively modern, had decent amount of RAM, decent amount of storage space, and as you can see here, we have a Skylake CPU in here. This I think is a first for Lee Reboot. Um, we have an i5-6500. We can go up to 32 gigs of RAM. We have a two and a half inch hard drive slot, M.2 slot. Um, we can also internally flash this, which makes it super easy. We don't have to mess around with any flashers if we don't want to. It's relatively small and pretty power efficient. I think the power brick is rated for 65 watts, but in real life, this thing doesn't even get close to that. Now make sure to always check out the official documentation from Lee Reboot. Um, I'm not from the Lee Reboot organization, but I'm, I really like their project, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Um, here you can see how small it is. We're about seven inches by seven inches and just over uh, an inch and a half thick. This is a one liter PC. This is just like the tiny mini micros you might've seen on uh, other channels like Serve the Home. Now we do have to get into this to change one little jumper to allow us to flash internally. To get inside, it's really easy. We have a thumb screw on the back and then we just kind of slide the panel forward. And then once we get in there, you can see there's a little jumper right next to the coin cell battery and the SATA connector. Now we just have to move that jumper from its middle position to the position closest to the SATA connector. This will disable the flash right protection. After that, we can close it back up. It's pretty easy. We just slide the cover back on and tighten the thumb screw down. After we close it up, we have one more preparation step we have to do. We have to turn on the machine and go into the stock BIOS and change a couple settings to make sure everything's good to go for our Libre Boot installation. Uh, when you do power it on after this, you will have an alert saying your service mode jumper is set. That's just that jumper we set um, previously. It's no big deal. After that, we'll go into BIOS setup. From here, if you're familiar with Dell BIOSes, you just go down to Secure Boot. You can expand it by hitting Spacebar. Go down to Secure Boot Enabled and just make sure that's disabled. If it's enabled, it could cause problems when flashing Libre Boot. After we exit out of the BIOS setup and it resets again, we'll get a message about the hardware jumper for the password settings being moved. That's fine. That was the initial position the jumper was in in the beginning. We'll just move it back after the installation. Now I'm doing this in a fresh install of Ubuntu. So we're going to do everything from the ground up. So we have to install Git first. So we run sudo app install Git. We'll just run git clone https colon slash slash codeberg.org slash libreboot slash lbmk. After that, we're going to cd into that directory we just cloned. Um, one other setting I'm going to set real quick is I'm going to type export space xbmk underscore threads equals four. Because we're building this on the Dell 3050 Micro itself, I'm just saying, hey, we have four CPU threads. It should make the compile process go a little bit faster. After that, we're just gonna install the dependencies. We type sudo dot slash mk dependencies Ubuntu. Libreboot has put this all in their script and makes it super easy to get all the correct dependencies and for building Libreboot. After that, we're gonna type dot slash mk dash b flash prog. And I like to get this out of the way up front. We're gonna need flash prog anyway. Um, in, in the past, I used to use Flash ROM, but I guess there were some differences and the project got forked and this is now what Libreboot recommends. Now, finally, we can start building the Libreboot ROM. We're going to type dot slash MK dash B core boot Dell 3050 micro underscore VFSP underscore 16 MB. Once we hit enter, it'll start compiling our Libreboot ROMs and we'll be good to go. We're kind of building it from source here because Libreboot, as of right now, doesn't have any pre-made images for this. And I don't foresee that happening in the future. These do have FSP on, on board. So we need two blobs from that that we have to pull from Intel due to the licensing. Um, but maybe in the future, they'll, they'll find an easier way to do it. I will say I got to give huge props to the Libreboot organization. This new build script is super easy. It's all in there. You just type dot slash MK and you can build either flash prog or Libreboot or, you know, all this stuff. They make all the commands super simple. 
Once this is built, we're going to CD into the flashprog folder. So we're going to type CD space elf slash flashprog. Now this did take me a little bit to find. Um, I wish the flashprog utility was in the bin folder. It would just make it slightly easier to flash, but it's no big deal. From here, we're going to type sudo dot slash flashprog dash p internal dash r and path to wherever you want to store your stock bios this is a backup of these stock bios this is very important we're going to do two reads and compare them just to make sure we have a good backup even though it's an internal flashing process right here we want to have a good backup now once we run the diff command and point it at both the files if you get no output that means both files are exactly the same and you're good to go to proceed if you do not get that you will have to Go back and try again. Now we're going to flash Libreboot to it. It's the same command, but instead of dash R, we're going to do dash W and then path to where our Libreboot ROM is. I'm just using the CBIOS with Grub with the Core Boot graphics and a US QWERTY keyboard. So that's the ROM I chose. If you have a different keyboard or want text mode, you can change that. Now this takes a little bit longer than the reading. I did speed it up, but it takes about maybe five minutes. It's going to read the contents, erase, and then write Libreboot to it. You'll know you're good to go when it says verifying flash and then says verified. If it doesn't say verified, um, you can either try again or I'd recommend hopping on the IRC. The last thing you need to do is don't power it off via the OS. You have to unplug the power cable. I guess because we booted with the stock BIOS, it writes some bits back when you just do a normal shutdown. To get around that, we just unplug the cable, and then now your internal flashing is done. As you can see, we're starting up. It says Libreboot in the corner, and then now we get to the Libreboot Grub page. I do want to apologize for how small it is. I guess my capture device defaulted to 4K, and I couldn't figure out how to change it. But as you can see, we have the nice Libreboot logo, and we've Librebooted internally this computer. Now. I'm going to show you guys how to externally flash this if you want. We're going to go back into the terminal. And for me, I'm going to be using the Pi Pico as a flasher. So we're going to CD back into the LBMK folder. And we have to run another command to build the Pico flashing firmware. So we're going to type dot slash MK dash B Pico dash serp prog. Now this build process does take quite a long time. It takes almost as much time as building the Libreboot ROM, so about another 30 minutes. I did speed this up to make sure the video wasn't over an hour long. I think the reason it takes as long is because besides doing just the firmware for the Pico and Pico 2, it does a bunch of other small microcontrollers as well. Once this gets done building, I'll show you how to load the firmware to your Pico and get your Pico set up to flash externally. Now I'm using a brand new Raspberry Pi Pico and to get the firmware set up on it to be able to flash a spy chip, we will have to hold the boot select button as we plug in our USB cable. This will tell our Pi to boot up as a mass storage device. This way we can drag our firmware into it and it'll start flashing. Now we already built the firmware so we have to traverse to the Libreboot folder. So we go to the LBMK folder, bin, and then to Surprog Pico. In here, you can see there's a bunch of other firmware files for all those other devices I was talking about. I'm just gonna search for Pico and choose just Surprog Pico because I have a Pico 1 and that's exactly what it is. From here, we're gonna copy and paste it into our Raspberry Pi. It should automatically disconnect and in a few seconds, it will present itself to the computer. Now to find what interface your Pico's on, I like to do ls slash dev slash tty acm star. If it's the only one, it should be acm zero. You could run dmessage and it'll show you as well. Here's a picture of the BIOS chip. This is located underneath the hard drive, but it's very important that a little divot on the BIOS chip indicates pin one. You have to know where pin one is so you can know where all the other pins are. And here's how to wire it up to your Pico. I made this design myself. Libreboot does have pictures showing how to wire it up, but they were on two separate images and I thought it was slightly confusing. Now, after you've wired up your Pico to your clip, we're gonna go into the Dell, remove the CMOS battery, just cause we don't want any other voltage in the system besides what the flasher is providing. And we're gonna hook up our Pico with the clip to the BIOS chip. This is how we can externally flash it. Make sure you know what pin one is for your clip, for the BIOS chip, and for the Pico. Make sure everything's wired up properly. If you send voltage down the wrong, pin there could be consequences it could break your machine 
Now, once we hooked it up, I'm going to hook up the USB and we're going to go to our computer and start externally flashing. So from here, we're going to navigate to the flash prog folder. We're just going to type CD elf slash flash prog and we're going to type in a similar command, but slightly different. We're going to type sudo dot slash flash prog dash P for our programmer and type sir prog colon dev equals slash dev slash TTY ACM and then whatever number we determine our Pico to be. After that, we're going to do comma spy speed equals 16 M and you'll see I get an error here when I try to read is because we have to define our chip. It flash prog detects our chip and says, Hey, there's a couple that are very similar to this. Which one is it? Um, based off of looking at our BIOS chip, I determined the most similar one was the first option for me. So we're going to type dash C and then put in quotes the chip number it has. After that, we're going to do dash R and then stock one dot ROM so we can get a good read of our stock BIOS. Doing this read here is important so we get a backup of our stock BIOS and also to ensure the clip is on there good. So we're going to do two reads and make sure we have a good copy. We're going to run the diff command and if diff doesn't say anything, it means we have two copies of the same file and we can safely move that somewhere else like on a USB drive or to another computer. That way, if we ever have to flash back the stock BIOS in the future, we have a safe copy. Now, after this, we're going to write our Libreboot ROM to it. So it's the same command, but instead of dash R at the end, we're going to do dash W and then path to wherever our Libreboot ROM is. For in our case, it's still in the bin folder. So we're going to go bin slash Dell 3050 micro. And then I'm going to use the same CGRUB um, Libreboot ROM with core boot graphics and a US QWERTY keyboard. If you want text mode or have a different keyboard or just want CBIOS, you can choose the corresponding ROM and start flashing. Now this process does take about five minutes. I did speed up this part of the video to make it a little bit shorter than watching a, an hour long video. Um, as you can see, it goes through the whole process of reading the flash chip contents, erasing and then writing Libreboot and then verifying the flash to make sure it had a good write. It should say verified at the end. If it gives you an error, try again, maybe try reconnecting the clip to the BIOS chip, ensuring you have a good connection. But if it still fails after that, make sure to hop into the IRC and get assistance. Now we can unplug our Pico, which will remove power from it, which will then allow us to unplug the clip from our BIOS chip safely. Once we've removed our flasher, we can then start reassembling of the computer. We're going to put in back our CMOS battery and then also plug back in our hard drive. As you can see, it just kind of slides into place and then we can slide back on the top cover. Once the top cover is on, we can just tighten down that thumb screw. And now we have a fully rebooted computer. I did show how to do internal or external flashing. I did that just in case if you have a preference of one or the other, I do find the internal flashing to be a little bit easier. It's not as, um, in depth as the external flashing, but the external flashing is good to know just in case you accidentally break your machine. If you do break your machine, you have a copy of your stock BIOS that you should have put on another USB drive or another computer for safekeeping. You can just flash that back. You'll have the normal Dell BIOS and you can try again. Another reason I wanted to make this video is I really like what the Libreboot project is doing. They've simplified their whole build process. They're starting to support a lot more boards. So make sure to check them out and let them know what great job they're doing. Um, if you guys like the video, make sure to give us a like, comment, and subscribe, and stay tuned for future content.